For this first bite, we're making focaccia slathered in homemade pesto. What I love to do, get a big sheet tray like this, put some olive oil on the bottom of it, so good. And then, yeah, here's your dough, right? You just let it kind of rise. When it's a pillow like this, you kind of just press it down. And you don't want to, like, punch it. I think, you know, a lot of people have this tendency. They just want to, boom, maybe it's just been a rough day at work or whatever it is. But you kind of just want to, like, spread it out when you're making focaccia. And that looks so, like, there's something about that I just love. <laughs> and you want to kind of just use your fingertips and kind of dig into the dough and kind of stretch as you're doing that. And, what that does is it just creates like little pockets for this olive oil to kind of get into, right? So you kind of spread it out like this, and then you just go with a little bit more olive oil. And by a little bit, I mean, let's douse that puppy. In fact, I'm not gonna stop until you guys tell me to stop. This is a lot. Yeah, I'll keep going. Okay, I'm going the whole thing. Let's go. I mean, a little bit here, a little bit there. So a little bit of salt over the top of that. And then you just kind of let that rest, right? And you put that in the oven. And it literally takes about, I mean, literally no time. I mean, about 20 minutes, 400 degrees, and you have really fluffy focaccia. I'll show you what that looks like. But we all can do that, right? Seems pretty easy. Nish? OK, great. Apparently, this is not easy, according to my father-in-law, but we're going to make some pesto. There's some really specific parts of pesto. I think a lot of us have made pesto. You've seen pesto now with like arugula, not just basil, or uh, not just pine nuts, but with walnuts or cashews. So you can really make pesto whatever you want, but there's kind of a basic you know, formula to making this the secret best pesto ever. First is, it's really important to use a mortar and pestle. Like, why not like a machine, like a blender or something? The blade, as it kind of spins around, it heats up the actual, like whatever you're grinding, and it actually kind of cooks it. So it kind of mellows out the flavor. So it's really nice to just pound it. Also, I just think it tastes better and fresher. So we start with a little garlic in the bottom here, big pinch of salt and you just kind of go to town. Really easy, and this is exactly how they make it in Italy. Then we get some toasted pine nuts. And this is, again, I'm like, how can I mess this up? How is he telling me I'm doing this wrong? You can tell I have like PTSD from this thing. <laughs> Years of feeling rejected from my father and I can't win with him. All right, so you kind of make a paste here. It's almost like peanut butter, right? Once you get those kind of pine nuts going, really, really nice. And then you want to go with the freshest basil ever. And this is another thing that he always tells me. It's like, you should really only do this in the summer is his big thing. Listen, you can go get basil at your local. It'll be fine. But it is really nice to find just super fresh basil. And you kind of want to overload it. Right? Look how good this looks. So you're going to be able to smell this in a heartbeat. It smells so good. And at first, you're like, God, this is just a lot. But you really get in there. And you just start kind of bashing it up. When I was in cooking school, we would have this class, which was all about seasonal Italian regions and what they would cook. And they would talk about this one region, Liguria, where they would make pesto. And, you know, we would learn about it during the week, and then we'd get to go travel there. So you'd learn about it in these books. You'd be like, oh, this is how pesto is created. This is how they make it. Then you get on a train, and you can smell, I swear, you get off the train in Liguria, you can smell the basil in the air. It's crazy. And over in the gray, it grows next to lemon groves. So my little trick here, and I tell everybody this, I'm not secret with this, <laughs> is a touch of lemon zest. Mm. Honestly, they, they would never do this in Italy, but the basil picks up lemoniness from the trees. And so I think it kind of emulates the freshness of Italy. So you kind of grind that to a paste, and then you kind of just start drizzling in some olive oil until it's kind of that texture that we all know pesto to be, that really nice paste. Now, this part's really important. Most recipes, 90% of recipes, would say, add in the cheese, and this is done. I mean, really fresh. Just green, I mean, slather that on the sidewalk and I'll lick it off. That's good <laughs> stuff, all right? But the key to this, and what Gino taught me, is to add the cheese when you're ready to eat the pesto. So don't add the cheese and then put it in the fridge. Leave it like this, and then when you're ready to make pasta or do something like that, we have a big batch here ready to go. This has no cheese in it. It's just the same stage. This is when you grab your cheese, fresh Parmesan. I mean, can someone make a pillow out of fresh Parmesan? <laughs> I will sleep on that like a baby. And then you just kind of fold that in. And the reason why we do that at the very end is because cheese is salty, and it brings out a little bit of the moisture. And you don't want it to bring out the moisture. You want it to kind of stay nice and fresh. So we kind of do that at the very end. And we have this gorgeous pesto. And then we'll fast forward through time. Same bakasha, same bakasha. So what I do is take this puppy out. Look how good this looks. 
And so you just take this pesto and you just kind of, yeah, this is not going to suck. This is going to be, <laughs> some people will bake it on. I like the freshness of just kind of smearing it on. I mean, you could just, I, you could taste it, right? Exactly. This makes incredible sandwich bread. It's awesome just to have on the dinner table. And you literally just kind of slice it up just like this. And you just kind of start passing it out. And it's just heaven. I know it's like fluffy, airy, so herbaceous. And that is our first bite of the day.